I'm going to just start applying. Oh, I've got <laughs> I've got Twitch on on my computer in the background. Hang on, I gotta go shut it off if I can hear myself talking. Yeah. So I'm going to pull back this ochre, um, which is the background of this piece, and I'm going to um, kind of predetermine a palette of colors, and I'm just going to start putting almost blobs of color everywhere, because I have an idea in mind. Um, it's inspired by a few artists that I follow on Instagram, and of course I can't think of her name at the moment, but basically I'm going to put blobs of color everywhere and then do a subtractive technique with um, white or maybe another color over top of everything and just leaving areas of the of the multitude of colors in behind and um, maybe ending up with some cool illustrative elements later probably not making any sense at all but um, let's just start by putting some other colors in this palette so I definitely want some hot paint I'm all about hot pink. I've got this Liquitex acrylic soft body, so I'm going to definitely do that. Not a lot left in here, but I've got other tips of it are similar if I need it. I hear movement upstairs. Probably need another sun. Who's my Twitch advisor? <laughs> I love it when my sons teach me stuff. Of course they do every day, don't they? If you're a parent. Um, lime green? Sure, why not? You can tell that I have color favorites. <laughs> Clearly by the shape of these tubes. I use these colors a lot. I tend to gravitate toward really bright, happy colors. And let's pull this chroma turquoise. Actually cobalt teal. Put some of that in there. Man, these are nice paints. baby pink. I feel like I want a dark purple, not magenta. Um, dark purple. I'm going to have to hit up my... I might have enough on this actually. 21? So, Amsterdam, five, six, eight. Woof! A new paint tube. Okay. All right. So, and again, I'm simply going to kind of blob these on. I might even use this tool, actually, now that I'm looking at it. Yeah, let's do that. I'm gonna put some music on. Uh, does Twitch do weird stuff with music? Copyright business? Huh, that's a good question. I'll have to look that up. I'm not gonna risk it because I don't want you guys to see this. It's weird though, not having music on. There it is. And I wish I could think of that artist's Uh, work inspired this 
technique, but it's very similar. I think I showed you, I know I showed you in my part one of this morning's video, my silver lining painting. It's kind of like that. Donna Downey does a lot of this technique as well, or at least she used to. I'm gonna leave the yellow. really just applying a bunch of color in the background and then covering it all up. With white or another color and then pulling out some of the back, pulling out some of those areas later on. And I don't mind when these colors blend because that's where you get the interesting patterns. like crapola for the first little while, but that's okay. That is okay. I'm just playing and having fun. No, <laughs> I sound like Bob Ross. Happy little polka dots. <laughs> ah. Get some of the dark purple going on here. <laughs> Happy little trees. Like when the spatula skips and you get these cool like marks, track marks. I think that's fun. When the colors blend together. And the texture. Kind of force some of that texture. Let's get these blues. Oh yeah. See when those things blend together? It's fun. It's fun, I tell you. Fun, F-U-N, fun. probably see now what's happening. I'm just creating a really playful background of colors, letting them mesh together. Not concerned at all with cross-contaminating my palette. Because that's where some really cool interactions take place with the colors. Not concerned at all with the texture, the, you know, the texture that the spatula is creating. I want to wipe this dark purple off here. Ooh, that was fun. I went over it too quickly. Let's leave that there. I'll bring some more of that dark going down to this corner. I'm not sure if you've seen that. There you go. I'm just gonna like go back and forth between all these colors and see what happens. is looking a little murky so I want to oops <laughs> it's gonna be purple now Just yet. 
need to look up using music in Twitch videos because I definitely prefer being in here when there's music playing. Not that I prefer being in here when there's music playing, but I, I love listening to music. I always have music on, usually. Um, and so it feels weird to not be listening to music. Okay, let's go back to this purple. <laughs> Looks like chaos, but uh, stay with me. There's a method to my madness. Because these palette marks are so thick, it's going to need to dry for quite a while before I can come back to it. So we'll have to, we'll have to check in maybe tomorrow afternoon for the next part three. Of course, then it'll be Monday afternoon studio time and not Sunday morning. so they're not so thick because I don't want whoops I don't want gobs of texture in the final piece um, so yeah I'll probably do that but I'm gonna have to be really careful because I don't want to over blend like, I love what's going on here with these colors mixing together covered the whole background, which I don't need to do, because there's some areas of the background that can remain intact, but you know what? When I'm done with it, hmm, I'm going to pull some of this ochre in again. I'm just trying to decide if I want to keep going and cover the whole background, or background. Hmm. It really looks like the dog's breakfast when I look at it on my, on my phone. Actually, if this was my dog's breakfast, she probably wouldn't feel very well after, feel very good after. It just looks chaotic to me, but Here that I'm choosing to go over all of the background, if for no other reason than to just get a really sturdy base coat on here. I think that's it. Nope, a little splotch there, 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 and there. Okay, we are covered. made pretty good use of that selection of paints. Okay. So
So I think I'm going to take um, a rag and just really diligently lift up some of these thick, thick, thick um, palette marks where I don't want loads of texture. Yeah, this is relatively easy to do without affecting the integrity of the color. I'm doing this for two reasons. I don't want it to take all day to dry because I'd like to come back and work on it um, today. And I don't want all these peaks and valleys in the final piece. I should probably have started in one corner and worked my way down, but I can do that. And it's also going to make a really gorgeous rag. Oh, yeah. Um, if you're new to me, or new to Joe Girl and Live Your Spirit, you wouldn't know much about me and my business. Um, I host workshops and creative play events, classes, workshops, um, but also a women's art retreat weekend, usually every February, March, at a really gorgeous woodland retreat facility, about an hour and a half from Ottawa. Um, and the participants receive a bag of art supplies, like brushes and palette knives and different pens and things like that. And the bags are made by my friend Barbara out of old rags that either former participants or myself have used over the year and they're just dotted with um, paint because acrylic paint doesn't come out once it's dry so I wash these rags up and um, they're really gorgeous and Barbara sews them into little pencil cases little tool bags we call them rag bags <laughs> if you come to one of my women's art retreat weekends, you too can have your very own rag bag. I have some, actually quite a few repeat guests, and I think they must be going on their fourth or fifth rag bag, which is super fun. Okay, this is looking really good. I'm happy that I'm doing this, pulling these big globs out. There will still be some texture. I just didn't want the big, huge mountains of paint. I'm strategically leaving some because I like the way that the colors mixed together. I like that one. It's really fun. Hi. <laughs> Okay, I'm going to take the phone off the tripod and just kind of come up close to some of these areas that I think are particularly, particularly interesting. No, oh, I realized I didn't have this plugged into power. Okay, looks like a mess. <laughs> looks like total chaos. But I love what's going on here. So these are the types of areas that I will likely keep visible. So I'm going to probably paint over this whole thing with white later on, um, but leaving out those areas that are particularly interesting. So once it's, once this is dry, I'll probably use a piece of chalk and, you know, do some cool like floral illustration or something. And then I paint around that chalk illustration with white, leaving behind the chalk, oops, um, the original illustration. So um, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be really cool. Um, anyway, that's my plan for now. I like what's going on here. You know, areas like this. That's my plan for now. Who knows what will happen when uh, when I actually get into it. But yeah, there we go. There's a glob I don't love. Boop. Bye bye glob. Okay. Stay tuned for part three.